everyone online can hear us. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for everyone being here. Thanks for the orientation this morning. And I want to welcome everybody. We've got a couple of new commissioners. Um, first, I'd like to, Sean Giles is usually here. He's out today, and so is Carlton Wilkinson. So they are both out, but they will be here for the next meeting, hopefully. And let's see. New commissioners, Arlene Nicholas Phillips and Beverly Watts. Thank you so much for joining PAC. I think you'll both find this is a fantastic committee to be on. It's very process driven and it's, we really get us so much work done. And I think this is the hardest working staff in Nashville. So thank you very much. And Jessica Ingram, who's our public art manager, she would be here today, but she is traveling and she's in Berlin right now. So, uh, and Leslie is here to present and uh, let's go around the table and introduce ourselves. I'm Campbell West, I'm the chair of PAC. Leslie Owens. And Leslie Owens, um, Public Art Collections Manager. Sarah Lee Bird. I am Arlene Nicholas Phillips, and I'm happy to be here as a commissioner. I am Vivian Fox. I'm the Office Support Specialist for Metro Arts. Beverly Watts, Commissioner. Good morning, Masanya Osei, Public Art Coordinator. Hi, everybody. I'm Kara Robinson, and I'm on the committee. Thank you, everyone. So glad to see all these faces. And then we have Stacy Irvin online. Stacy, you want to say hi? I'm Stacy Irvin. I'm a photographer, local artist, community member on the PAC. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. So I'd like to talk about staff for a second. So we have a big public art staff, but everyone is out on projects today. So, and Leslie, do you want to speak to where the staff is and what they're kind of up to today? Yes. And yes. yes, certainly. We have um, three active installations at two sites. So at the Donaldson Library, um, Jesse Ross is our project manager there. So we have two projects that are um, being wrapped up um, this week. And then um, Atelio Murga um, is at the Nashville Fairgrounds where we have a very large scale installation um, that has, um, will continue to be installed for several weeks, but it, it is um, in the, the completion stage. Thank you. These are two projects that have been in the works for multi-year. And so this, these are exciting, exciting times. And I'm sure we'll talk about dates for the, uh, yeah, for the, yeah, exactly. Wonderful. Um, additionally, I'd like to address the executive director will not be attending. As you may have heard, Director Singh is on leave and it's unclear when he will be returning. His absence along with HR, finance, legal concerns, ethics concerns related to the department, and the board commissioners make it for a very challenging time for Metro Arts right now. I know that the commission is working really hard to address all of these. We'll be meeting next week and hopefully have more updates, but I just wanted to open that up and see if anybody had any questions um, about that aspect of things. Just wanted to update everybody of where we are. Okay. All right, and Leslie? All right. Um, let me just speak for the public art team. Um, amid all this, the, the work um, definitely continues. Uh, we can't afford to slow down. We have multi-year projects. Um, we have <clears throat> schedules with commitments to our artists, to Nashville communities, um, to other metro departments. So definitely the work um, continues. Fortunately, um, the funding, which has been... <clears throat> Um, in the news, and, and you, know, you may have heard uh, mention of finance department taking over um, control of Metro Arts finances, um, we understand that because our funding is by and large percent fund, that's separate from the operating fund, which um, operational funds, which are what um, finance is, is very concerned with. And so, you know, we um, understand our finance um, director at Metro Arts, Chris Afote, has spoken with Metro Finance, and we understand that, that because those are different funds, it will not um, impact um, our ability to um, 
get our contracts going, um, pay our invoices, that kind of thing, which is, is very important to keep um, our questions going. Um, we, in fact, have three contracts that um, are being routed for signatures right now, so that's um, very exciting. And um, we are going to just continue what we're doing um, according to our public art guidelines and using our process and following our schedule. I'll have some more updates as we get farther in the meeting. Thank you, Ann Leslie. I'd like just to add to that that, yes, public art is percent funds. I know a few of you went through orientation this morning. So on this end, it's not operating. So that's not what finance is actually looking at. So again, the commission is doing everything we can to work with the community, to work with each other, to work with all the various entities that are involved to try to get uh, that piece handled. But with, with, this, with this committee, it's a bit different. So hopefully you all will find this to be an enjoyable experience. Any questions from anybody about that? Okay. Thank you. Okay, Vivian, do we have any public comments? There are no public comments, no. Thank you. Moving on to item C, approval of the minutes. We actually are going to postpone that to the May meeting. And then we're going to move right on into action items. We have two today, two exciting projects. And, and Leslie will catch you all up and I turn it over to you. Thank you, Chair West. Um, the first um, action item pertains to the Bordeaux Gateway Project. Um, those of you um, who were with us in the orientation um, heard um, about the Bordeaux Gateway Project, which is um, a project that has come to us um, through the um, 2022 North Nashville Bordeaux um, participatory budget process. It was a, a project that um, was recommended by the community. Um, it was put on the ballot and um, it received um, so many votes that it did get um, funding. So we are excited to be working on that. It's one of two um, participatory budget projects that we're doing. The other one is at the Luby Community Center. Um, for this Bordeaux Gateway Project, we're bringing it back to you today. Those of you who have been um, on the Public Art Committee for a while um, know that it is a gateway project. Um, it, this is the traffic um, triangle there at Rosa Parks and Clarksville Highway. There is an existing Welcome to Bordeaux sign, um, but there's also community interest in doing something a little, little bit more there. And um, as we have gotten into this project, and, and I'm going to refer you to the um, drawings from Barge Design of the existing site and then where they might propose would be suitable for artwork. Um, as we have gotten into this project, we have brought in um, well, first of all, talked to our colleagues at Nashville Department of Transportation and the Tennessee Department of Transportation. This is, you know, a right of way, roadway kind of project. And so um, because it is state owned, we will be going through um, additional um, Tennessee um, Department of Transportation review, something a little different from most of our projects. Um, we also, um, as we've done the site work, have been made aware of the, you know, certainly this is a drainage area. So even under the existing sign, there um, is a you know, drainage pipe there. There's, you know, underground utilities. So there's a lot of concerns we need to, to think about. For um, an artist, um, this you know, certainly came up in our site visit with our four semifinalists. Um, there's interest in doing something, you know, the potential to do something large that could be seen from some distance, you know, of some size and scale. Um, but then the triangle it itself is so large that it wouldn't necessarily have to be a single um, sculpture, you know, something like the sign at one location. So there could be some things on multiple sides. So we really realize how this project could be so much more um, than a $200,000 project, which is what the initial um, award was um, through the mayor's budget for participatory um, budgeting. And so we are coming back 
to the Public Art Committee um, to um, offer the recommendation that we expand the artist budget. Um, we had it at 185000 considering there were some artist honorariums and other things we wanted to do um, that would take up um, the, you know, some of that 200,000, that um, 15,000. So what we'd like to, to recommend is taking that um, artist budget from 185 to 300,000. And the schedule for this um, process, just to give you a little more information about, about what next steps would be, this is the time to kind of consider um, upping that budget. Uh, we have the four uh, semifinalists, and those are Omari Booker and Steve Hutchins, work, Stephen Hutchins working as a team, James Threlkill, um, Shabazz Larkin, and Prado Studio. So we have some outstanding local artists, and we will be developing a request for proposals. So they've made the first cut to become a semifinalist, and now we would like to firm up the budget, um, create a request for proposals so that they can create those proposals with renderings, you know, present what their design would be, and we anticipate having this at the Bordeaux Library where the public can provide feedback and we can also have it online. So now is the, the time if we want to expand this budget so that the artist can plan accordingly. With that, I'll turn it to you. Thank you. Um, so some of you are new and we knew when this project came to us with participatory budgeting um, that we would need to increase this budget. We knew when it, when it came to us that it would need to be increased. So that was discussed in prior PAC meetings. So I'm firmly behind this increase, knowing that when, depending on how much you all know about predatory budgeting, we were given a short amount of time to just put a number on this from the 22, so a different administration. So now we are at this point and we did know that we were gonna need to increase substantially and I'm glad that we were at 300 and knowing all the ins and outs of it, I fully support the increase. I have a question. So we first had 200,000. We know we need to increase because of all the other parameters that surfaced. But where did we get that magic number for this additional 100,000 from? Do you have costs that would total this additional? What, what if it's 150,000 more that you need? How did you determine it was 100,000 more that you needed? Well, that's a very good, a very good question. And um, as public art um, project administrators, project managers, you know, we look at other projects, um, similar projects, to help us um, make an educated guess as to what um, an adequate budget would be um, based on our expectations of of the artist. And we do see that um, Metro Arts would be um, providing um, additional funds, and this is typical of any project, for site work. So a lot of, uh, you know, bringing electrical to the site, those are things that are always a part of Metro's, um, the additional funds that Metro provides to any project that don't need to come out of the artist budget. But, you know, in talking to Metro Legal, um, they were very, you know, clear in their thinking that um, there, there would be um, a, a limit to what we could provide for example, we cannot do the foundation. That truly is something that um, needs to, to be part of the artist design um, liability issues. So we want to help out as much as we can. But you know, certainly um, that was a significant factor um, of the foundation that would be required the footing for this artwork. Um, but yes, it's it's based on other projects and um, that how we uh, determine a recommendation for a budget. And other projects, keeping in mind that you said something about drainage issues happening below that piece of property, uh, you may run into stuff depending on how long it's been since the, um, the, I don't know much about drainage and all of that, but I'm thinking if you've laid pipes and stuff uh, underneath uh, that it may have deteriorated. You don't know what you're going to run into once you start digging. Uh, have you allotted for that? 
Well, we um, have hired Barge Design, and they are doing that kind of review, which will reveal infrastructure. So we're depending on on them for some of that. Um, but you know, certainly, um, if we, if we needed to, we could come back. But um, at this point in time, this is the the information we have, and so we're moving forward with this this estimate. Thank you. I think this project might be a good example of public art projects that we get into it and exactly what you said you know you dig in and then suddenly there's infrastructure that needs to be taken care of and so with public art you know i work in public art outside of the committee and also with the committee and it's something that we run into a good bit is that just things come up and so there's a flexibility level but we feel that 300 at this point should cover that and again the foundation those issues those are going to need to come out of the artist budget and so we want to be able to cushion that so work can be made well, my main concern was that we don't want to uh, not have enough and then have to hold back from paying the artists I want to make sure that the artists get what they're due the artist will have a contract for whatever that amount is that you approve and you and the Commission approve so um, overages you know it, or, well anything related to the site work that is something that we pay and we have that little bit of flexibility and a buffer of about 20 percent of the project budget thanks for clearing that up thank you any other questions I'd like to call for a motion Staff recommends approval of an increase of the Bordeaux Gateway project artist budget from 185000 to 300000 So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Watts. And I second that motion. Thank you, Commissioner Phillips. All right, thank you. Moving on to action item number two. Um, this is not typical that uh, um, the action, all the action items are related to requests for increases in budget. But you know, this this is the nature of public art projects. So. so <laughs> So um, this um, pr project, you'll see um, some information provided by the um, artist regarding um, Celestial Falls. Um, this is by artist Amber Lelly um, of Mount Juliet. This is for the Donaldson Library project. This is the interior suspended piece that you all have seen. Um, they are working dilig diligently to complete it. Um, and in the course um, of, of this project and all projects, we ask artists for a fabrication budget. Um, and artists, as a, as a best practice, always allow for a contingency. So they, like, like you all have, have you know, under, understand, there are things that pop up that um, aren't expected. But um, sometimes, and we have, are increasingly finding um, this to be the case, um, certainly since COVID, um, sometimes there's a fabrication budget and then you, after approvals happen, you get to the time where you're, you're ready to sign a contract with a fabricator and costs have gone up and they can't honor that original um, fabrication quote. This um, happened to um, Amber Lelly um, with um, issues related to installation and transportation. Um, also with the, the flowers um, that she is creating and the rods um, and the structural armature, you see all of that information. Let me see if this goes through it. Well, and just to, let me back up a little bit before we get into the details um, of the request. This, you can see just how um, intricate um, this piece is. It is at the back of the, the new library under construction. Uh, children will be able to view it from the second, and, and their ad adults with them, uh, will be able to view it from the second um, level where there'll be these large scale flora and fauna, fauna. So you'll see some plants, some animals, ones that are all native to Donaldson. And then below, it feels like this, this wave, um, both in shape as well as those individual 
um, forms um, that references the rivers that go through Donaldson. So an absolutely beautiful piece that can be viewed from the second level, from downstairs, and from um, the back where there's that, that huge window wall. So there will be viewing from outside as well. So <clears throat> what um, do I, should I, would it be helpful if I walked you through this document? Have you all had a chance um, to look at some of those um, as, you know, she has it arranged, so there's the estimate that she received earlier on in the project, and then what the actual cost has been and the difference. Um, would it be helpful if we walked through this together, or have you all, all had a chance to take a look at it? I'm sorry? I said I Okay, good. Great. And of course, near the end, um, she has all of the actual costs and the estimates combined. And of course, there's a, a larger difference of actually over $111,000. Um, but she has, you know, worked with her budget, found some savings from other categories where things weren't as, as high as she thought they would be. And then she had that 20000 in contingency. So her um, request is for $76,845.48. As I mentioned, you know, we are finding that this is, this is not the first time this has happened. Oh, and here's just some, some photos. You can see the work taking place um, on the flowers and just how large those are. Um, our contracts allow for just this scenario. We ask for a fabrication budget, so we have some documentation of what um, the artist is anticipating, and then if it does get to a point where costs, material, labor, whatever have gone up, we're, we're, we have something to compare it against. And so in our contracts, we um, state that in the event of material increases in the proposals, estimates, or invoices from the selected fabricators or installers of the artwork after the initial bids proposals resulting from increased material and or labor cost or resulting from design changes required by Metro or required as the result of material shortages, that's a long sentence, the all-inclusive fixed fee of $150,000, which was her artist's budget, shall be increased by a like amount, and such increase shall be paid at the time of and as part of the below fifth payment. So that's where we are. Um, she is at the stage where she could be paid for the fifth payment, but is requesting that um, there be additional funds um, attached to that fifth payment. It will um, require a contract um, amendment um, to, to complete this, but we have done them before. Um, and um, are happy to do one um, in this case. Is there anything I... Let's see. As Ann Leslie said, this is something that we have built in to these contracts because we know, you know, as things go on, as inflation happens, you know, I've got a project running right now that we've had to increase in another state because the plastic's higher, you know, things like that that just, and these are multi-year projects. You've just got to remember that throughout the years, things do change. And I think it's really important to point out that in this specific project, Amber has put 100% of the labor back directly into Tennessee. So we've got 90% in Davidson County. So we are funding what, 24? Yeah, 24 local artists through this one project. So I think it's a really good example of how a public art project should actually involve the whole community. Like she's really, she's really worked hard on sourcing local. And so I'm very familiar with structural installation, all this. I've looked at these numbers and the increases, they make a lot of sense. They, they absolutely do. Um, and I just, I'm really glad that she's put so much thought into this and that we were able to employ so many local people. So, yes, yeah, she says here, hundred percent of the labor was exclusively, exclusively from Tennessee, 90% from Davidson County. And additionally of the 28 vendors, approximately 24 were in the city. So yes, she has a, a commitment, um, to, um, 
using local artists. And, you know, I love the fact that we, you know, that the gilding that you are seeing um, on some of those flowers, I mean, we are training artists. So we're Im improving their skill sets um, and allowing them to take on new and different projects that they might not um, have been able to do before because of learning um, this skill while, while assisting on this project. Thank you for adding that because I think that also lends to a lot of what we do with public art is we want artists to be able to be involved with public art projects and then lift them up to the next level and the next level. So this way people are increasing their skill set and also learning a lot more about how the public art process works. And so maybe down the road they want to apply for something. So, and this again is a local project. So. photos of the work in progress. One other thing I'd like to add is I really think that Amber's thoughtfulness of the community really is going to come through in the sculpture. I mean, there's so much in it down to there was a certain, what was it? It was, there was a certain, was it a bug? Was it a mosquito? What was it? that she had sort of isolated and it just it's really it's interesting how she really worked with the community and this is going to reflect so much of the history but also the natural and the ecological aspect of the area i have one question how long has this been how long has this project been three years Maybe two and a half years. Two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I was just wondering the the um, the quote, the original quote was so low, and uh, the material, the labor, everything has gone up so much. I was just wondering how long was the time period to effect that? Two about two and a half years. So we two see in years. our multi year projects, this is something that comes up, especially with like the flowers, the gilding, all that. Materials get more expensive and. That tends to happen. So, yeah, that's what it is. Or, or not have, you know, thinking you have the, the craftsperson to do something and then for whatever reason they're no longer available and then you have to go a different route and you can't go the route you'd originally intended. Yep. So a lot of adjustments sometimes need to be made, especially on a project that's as complex as this. And again, you know, being able to keep this in Tennessee and primarily in Nashville is great because in so many cases, I know personally we've got to outsource to other states because we just don't have the, the work here. And so again, being able to train people through this will be helpful to a lot of people. Depending on how you define COVID, March, it would have, March. March of 20. So this would have gone out in early 21, okay, so I think. Yeah. 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 Especially with things like plastics and all kinds of things. I mean, that's just, it's come, it's gone up. And with installation, we always expect for some kind of, because you just don't know it's a long-term project any delays on construction at the library that affected this at all or no um no they pretty consistently kept on schedule so but you know she's had to make adjustments to keep her schedule and match um the overall library construction schedule any other questions or conversations I'm really excited to see this all come together. Can we get the next slide, please? Oh, sorry. Okay, no questions at all, then I'll call for a motion. Staff recommends approval to increase the budget for Amber Lelly's Celestial Falls project at the Donaldson Library by $76,845.48 to account for increased material and labor costs. So moved. Thank you.
I second that. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. So that ends our two um, action items to, that we wanted to bring to you. Um, the commission um, will then vote on them next week on Thursday. Uh, now I have some exciting project and program updates. Um, as we've mentioned, a lot of things are going on. Um, several projects are actually nearing completion, like Donaldson and Fairgrounds. And so we wanted to show you a little bit um, of what's happening. So Attilio Murga, our project manager, is at the Fairgrounds site right now. Um, Loqui um, by artist Blessing Hancock. Um, is currently under construction. So this is using um, a lot of um, local vendors um, from electricians to concrete people. Um, Art Up Nashville um, is assisting um, in some aspects of the installation. So um, it is definitely having an impact on the local economy. Here you get to see it at night. It's, it looks like this dual megaphone um, and with these, this wonderful um, lights um, on it, it's really going to make a statement both in the daytime and at night. And we all know just how um, much the Nashville um, Fairgrounds um, is used, so a lot of people are going to see this artwork. Um, it is about 32 feet high to give you some sense of scale. Um, right now, um, this image of it at night, um, it does not have the panels on it. It has um, panels with words um, that were suggested um, by the Nashville community. So all over this, it is going to have words about um, Nashville. So you get to see one there on the bottom. You get to see what that is going to look like with some of the words on there. I think so too. It's pretty ingenious, actually. It's it's pretty amazing. Yes, and the fact that they're using words that people of the community contributed, uh, I thought it was amazing. When I heard of this project, I just I'm all for it. It's great. Um, and second um, project that we mentioned is under construction um, is the Donaldson Library Project, for which um, we have not one um, but two artworks at this site. It was originally going to be one project, um, but then there was so much interest um, from library staff as well as from the then council member um, that we agreed to do two projects. So one is outside and one is inside. Um, this one is uh, called <clears throat> Reverie, and it is by a uh, California-based um, architectural team called Wow House. Um, uh, they um, have created this um, in thinking about the how people are going to use this um, wonderful green space in front of the library, um, a, a civic space that Donaldson um, has really not had until now. Um, it will allow um, people, whether they have a book or just gathering here um, in the Donaldson Plaza, um, to sit and to gather. And these beautiful Tennessee marble um, benches um, are, are going to be quite an accent to this green space. Another project um, that we have going on, and this is not nearly as far along, um, we, for this project, the old Hickory Community Center, we wanted to follow up um, because at our last meeting, um, Carlton Wilkinson on the, here on Public Art Committee had a question about wouldn't it be great to add skylights to this space? And we um, followed up on that and what um, Gordon Huther, the artist, what his rendering did not show was these clerestory windows that are on either side <clears throat> of this space. So they are going to be providing that um, ambient um, interior light um, and will enable that um, playful um, reflection on the walls um, coming from that dichroic glass. So I think the um, intent and what Carlton was talking about um, will be realized um, because of these windows. 
And I think I skipped over um, one thing that was on our project updates. Um, there's not a slide for this. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, because of um, scheduling considerations, sometimes we um, need to go directly to the commission for approval um, of, of one of our, the aspects of one of our projects. Such was the case with phase two of the lending library. Um, at, I guess, the February uh, meeting, um, March, March meeting, um, Jessica Ingram, um, our public art manager, brought the 54 selections, um, artworks, one each from a local artist that are, have been recommended for the next phase of the lending library. So we have it going to five branches. And so in your packet, what um, Vivian shared with you in advance and you have in front of you, these are the 54 artworks that will be um, added to our collection as part of phase two of the lending library. So this doesn't require a vote um, since it was approved by the commission, but we wanted to make sure um, you were aware and wanted to um, have you all join us um, in our excitement about phase two of the lending library. I just want to add that I think lending library is one of the best, one of the greatest programs that we have in town. I mean, to be able to go to a library, check out a piece of work, a local artist, and to be able to take it home, enjoy it, take it back, change it out. And we're really supporting the creative economy through this. Individual artists, we actually increased the purchase price this last year. So artists could get a little bit more in, in terms of what they're doing. And I think we increased it to 2000 Up to 2000 Artists yeah. um, identified the value, but up to 2000 Yeah. So I think that it's just something great to point out that it just it's so accessible and it, so much hard work has gone into this. So thank you very much, Ann Leslie. And then the last item before new old business um, is uh, just the um, good news um, that um, we have been, you know, working closely with finance, with procurement, um, updating our um, public art template. Um, it seems it had, had grown a little bit out of date and didn't have all the necessary um, items included in it. So they have helped us through that. And um, we currently have three contracts that are um, currently making their way through DocuSign. Those are ones for permanent supportive housing, for which Omari Booker is the artist. Um, Luby Community Center, that's the mural, one of the participatory budget projects, for which Creative Girls Rock is the artist. And then finally, the Arthur Avenue um, I-65 underpass um, in the Elizabeth Park area, Alex Bryden is the artist. And so all of those contracts um, will soon be completed and um, we'll be doing um, community engagement with those artists. And just to touch on that, these are the three contracts that we were speaking about in oversight yesterday. So um, we were first, due to the executive director's absence and not knowing when that, when that would be rectified, this is now all cleared up. So we are moving forward. And that is great news because these are great projects that needed to continue to be moved forward. So thank you for all your work. Questions about any of that? Great, thank you. So we'll move into new and old business. Um, let's see. I don't really have anything for new business except to say that the work that's done in PAC and Public Art Committee, we as the commissioners that are on the committee, it is our job to support the staff when we get into PAC because all the work gets done in committee, which I think this committee is one of, is a great committee to work within. And then we take that to the full commission for a vote. So this is the time to deliberate, discuss, all that kind of good stuff before we take it to full pack. So I just wanted to mention that. And then just one thing about public art is all the collaboration and all, like you mentioned, the, the impact on the economy, not just the creative economy, but the overall economy. So I just, I think it's something that we all just need to keep in our minds as we move forward. And I'm just really appreciate all of you serving and, and thank you very much. 
Does anybody have anything else they'd like to talk about today or address? I'd just like to thank them, thank uh, staff for the orientation because it brought us up to, it brought me up to speed. Let me put it like that. Us. <laughs> so I think, so thank you very much. Thank My you. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. If we have nothing else, then we are adjourned for the day. Thank you all very much. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.